As more and more people go solar, there are more and more solar companies and contractors popping up to take their money. And not all of them are trustworthy or have the same interests that you do. So you're the one that has to prevent what I call bad solar. I walk around my neighborhood in the U.S. every morning and see more and more homes with solar panels on the roof. Out of 1,500 homes, there are probably at least 80 with panels. Unfortunately, I see a lot of them with very obvious issues and design flaws. So I want to help you avoid that problem with five tips to avoid bad solar. But first, let me give you some background. Use the video chapters to skip ahead if you want to go straight to the five tips. For those of you that are new to solar, I'll give you a quick crash course on four things you need to know. Obviously, there's a lot more to it, so if you want a deeper dive, I have over 100 solar videos on my channel that you can check out. First, to get the most energy production out of your solar panels, they need to be aimed directly at the sun. Solar panels do not produce much power at all if they're just collecting reflected or ambient light. Obviously, the sun moves around the sky every day and even drops lower on the horizon during some seasons of the year. And if that sun gets blocked by an object, such as a tree or chimney, the shaded panels will not produce as much power. So how to mount your panels on your roof, what direction to face them, and how to avoid obstructions is critical in the design process of installing your solar panel system. Second, aiming your solar panels to the south if you live in the northern hemisphere or north if you live in the southern hemisphere mathematically and scientifically produces the most power overall throughout the day. But a case can be made for some people to aim half of their panels east and half of them to the west to take advantage of early morning and late evening sun. I won't get into all of that. I actually have a separate video that goes into a deeper dive on that. But there's never a case to be made for aiming solar panels in the opposite direction, north in the northern hemisphere or south in the southern hemisphere. You'll never get a return on that investment and you might as well burn your money. Third, solar companies do not have a vested interest in the energy production of your system. Their interests and motivations are different than yours. They make money by installing solar panel systems and then moving on to the next job and there isn't a roof out there that they won't take your money to install a system on. Now, before some of you start posting comments, I know there are a lot of good solar companies out there. Most of them, probably. But when the interests of the homeowner and the interests of a contractor don't line up, there's potential for a problem. There are some bad apples out there taking advantage of people. So if you don't know enough about solar to intelligently evaluate bids and see through some of the smoke and mirrors, you're at risk because there are no contractual guarantees of the production of your system after all said and done. And fourth, a 15,000 watt solar panel system does not ever really produce 15,000 watts. In the real world, it might make anywhere from 5,000 to 12,000 or so, depending on numerous variables. During the sales process, a solar company will use calculators and automated tools to estimate the power production of a proposed solar panel system. And these are decent forecasts, but they don't always factor in everything, such as your neighbor's tree, the location of your chimney, the precise pitch of your roof, or the exact model of solar panel that will be installed. And sometimes the install crew will take the path of least resistance and put the panels where they fit easier, or where they look better instead of where they'll get the absolute most sun. So now that you have that background, let me give you some examples from my neighborhood. I call these solar fails. This first house has west-facing panels, which is good, but you can see that the neighbor's house will block the sun with several hours of daylight still left, minimizing the benefit to only the late afternoon. In this second house, a large percentage of the panels face north. There's never a good excuse to face panels to the north in the US, ever. Same story on this third house, even without the tree in the way. On this fourth house, the east-facing solar panels are completely useless because of the neighbor's house until at least 10 a.m., maybe later. This one clearly was the installer's fault. As you can see, there's real estate up higher on the roof that was not shaded at 8 a.m., but maybe would not have looked as nice. This fifth house is mostly fine, but the chimney definitely blocks at least a couple of the panels in the evening and could have been avoided, but again, maybe not looked as clean. And finally, this sixth house has a tree that almost touches the gutters, so how the installers miss that is beyond me. 
and there's plenty of real estate on that roof face higher up that could have been used. The good news is you can avoid these issues and have a very successful solar panel system and a good sales and install experience. So here are five tips that will help. If you're not the DIY or handy type and don't want to educate yourself, skip to number five. Tip number one is take pictures or video of your roof at various times of day. A competent solar designer can predict shading fairly well, but you may not get a competent designer. And the only way to know for sure whether the neighbor's chimney or tree is going to shade your panels is to take pictures of the shadows throughout the day. Document all of this information so that you can tell your chosen contractor where you want the panels to be installed. Tip number two is get a compass or download a compass app on your smartphone. Then use it to determine precisely what direction each of the faces of your roof are facing. If you have a true south face if you live in the northern hemisphere or a true north face in the southern hemisphere, you're in great shape. But if you have east and west faces, you can still get pretty good production, especially if you have peak demands early or later in the day. Then, based on your goals and the data you're going to collect in the next tip, you can tell the installers which roof faces you want to use and why. Tip number three is get as much real data as you can. Don't guess when you use your power during the day. If your electric utility has a smart grid, you can download data that will help you find your peak demand times of day. If not, you can get a reasonably priced device that will connect to your breaker panel in your home and gather data for you. Because spending $400 now on a data tool can save you thousands, if not tens of thousands, on a bad solar install with incomplete or bad information. Your monthly paper power bill is not enough. That only shows you how many kilowatt hours you use per day or per month. You need much more than that to properly produce your own power and not depend on a one-sided co-generation relationship with your electric company. Tip number four is make a realistic goal. Many people want to completely eliminate their power bill, but unfortunately that's obscenely expensive and impractical. It used to be that you could sell your excess power back to the power company and have a net zero bill for the month or year. But that phenomenon is uncommon nowadays and slowly going the way of the dinosaurs. So analyze your budget and the available solar options for your home and figure out where the most value is to eliminate part of your bill, if that's your goal, or provide emergency power and backup power if that's your interest. However, along with a realistic goal is know when to say enough is enough. There's a concept in economics called marginal utility that basically means there's a benefit to every additional unit of something, and that benefit gets smaller and smaller with more units, usually. So, for example, if you fill up your south-facing roof here in the U.S., but the installer suggests that you put more panels on the east or west faces, determine what the added benefit of those panels will give you. East-facing panels give more power early in the morning, but if you work a swing shift and you're asleep until noon every day, that won't give you much benefit or utility. It would be better to save your money and not install extra panels than to burn it on panels that aren't adding much value. And tip number five, if you don't want to follow any of the other four tips, just contact Energy Sage. This is a company that I trust and their whole business model is geared around helping the homeowner, not the solar companies. Energy Sage is a marketplace that vets solar installers for you. It's an unbiased, free resource to help you understand your options without pushing a particular solution on you. Their goal is like mine, to protect and educate consumers. In fact, they reject over half of the solar installers that apply to their marketplace because they don't make the grade. Installers are evaluated and checked based on certifications, licenses, insurance, review ratings, and how long they've been in business. And once installers are approved, they have to compete for your business without stepping foot in your living room and giving you a high pressure sales pitch. Energy Sage will show you an apples to apples comparison of the proposals and a dedicated advisor will help you if you want them to with questions or concerns. As I was going through the process myself, I was even shocked that right there in the first 30 seconds in the questionnaire I was filling out, they asked me if I'd be willing to cut trees or limbs in my yard to go solar. They wouldn't do that if they didn't have my interests in mind. So if you're interested, there's an affiliate link in the video description and you can tell them that I sent you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something. Be sure to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up to show me your support.